Hey guys, so I wanted to kind of show Abathir again a little bit in this current uh, meta. So I, again, I still do more of the support Abathir builds. The the pushing Abathir did get buffed a little bit, but uh, in coordinated, people are going to be covering every lane. You don't really get that opportunity, and they did nerf like the back door of the keep. So uh, we're going back to the regular one. But a lot of people ask me, they're like, well, how is Abathir now that they did the experience changes? And I'm going to say it's <laughs> it's a lot harder to safely soak against the objective but he can still do a decent amount of soaking because the minions drop the experience giving you time for your hat to pick it all up so there are a few things about that that make it a little tricky but overall i'm not too worried about it um i like to check the bushes first with my uh with my traps i find it just to be a little bit more valuable then i like to always watch through rotation so what we're going to be doing here uh we'll just simply just do this to have him possibly survive but he'll likely actually be killed here um, okay, no, my shield was enough to keep him up, which is kind of nice. Then we're going to do this just to kind of slow down the rotations. And we can always just watch any of these areas. So Genji's going up here. We could jump down here if we want to. We're simply just going to pick up a bit of experience. Uh, and then we're also going to immediately drop it. And we can worry about that a little later. Uh, we're covering mid-soak fine. So I'm going to pop up a... Uh, a thing doesn't end up working down there so that's perfectly fine uh we'll just do one of these to pick up just a little bit of soak drop it because we don't need to worry too much about that either so now top is going to be covered by mouth ale we just need to worry about bottom now uh we might even bring our body down here so it's easier to uh push this lane out we're going to pick up a little bit of experience and then we're going to drop it um overall though we're not going to worry too much about anything here we're going to drop down uh we're going to drop down triple traps, and we're going to wait until this time's out. Once that time's out, we're going to walk up and grab all this experience. And once again, we're going to walk up and grab all this experience. Uh, Malthael is going to need a little bit of healing, so he'll pick it up from there. And I'll also heal a little bit with this. I'm going to turn that off. He can get the rest of the healing on his own. Um, and then same idea over here. We're going to just simply do this. He's going to use a couple abilities to try to kill this off, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, and we will end up using that one more time to cover that. Covering this lane is a little annoying because he will always be able to do more than I can do. But uh, that should be okay. We're going to simply just drop down three right here. And then we're going to put a shield on this to try to prevent some of the damage that he's doing and soak all that experience. It's going to be a little bit more efficient against him, I think. Uh, and we still have those traps available. Now that first objective is going to be spawning up there. So I'm going to make my way up top and continue pushing top, letting my team go down. Uh, one of my favorite talents is this pro prolific dispersion or dispersal. Uh, and the great part about this talent is you can cover huge zones uh, with your W. And it's very good to clear up an entire wave with. So Genji's probably going to stay up here for a little while. So we're going to set a trap just to kind of see where Genji goes. And on this first objective, you can see that Genji is staying here. And he's taking a good chunk of damage too. So we're going to do this and see if we can't get this Genji down. Uh, and now he just has to leave. And the benefit of that is now that he's going to leave, we're going to just head right up here. We're going to drop down a couple of these and do our best to try to keep our team up um, as we're going to clean up all of this and we're going to grab all the soak from this. So that's a really good spot for us to be in for that. And now we also want to make sure that we are giving a hat over to uh, Diablo so that he has just that survivability. Um, we're pushing top relatively easily, so we don't need to worry too much about that. But that objective is going to go to them. So we're going to set down a bunch over here, and we're going to Z in. We're actually a little late, um, but that's fine. And we're also going to do the same thing over uh, to top lane and just do our best to soak as much as possible. We're going to do this to pick up all that experience and turn it off. Then we're going to just, again, we're going to try to do our best to delay them in the rotations as we push out top lane. Um, until we're available to go bot. Let me see if I can get a good shield here. A couple heals, not quite enough. Uh, I did my best, though. I will Z down here when my Z is available, but first I'm going to see if I can't get some uh, some zoning down there. We're going to head down here, and uh, but yeah, I mean, the basic idea is your soaking is going to be less than it used to be and that is a major downside but you do have the benefit of when a when a minion dies you can pick up the experience late so that's one of the big benefits about it is you can pick up experience late we're going to do this to kill the front line as it starts running through um we can actually hit him a couple times and then we can drop it uh, this will get a little sketchy though because he's still going to be down here and he's going to do his best to distract and we also need to, to stall this out, try to get our team level 7s. 
and that's unfortunate um but we can actually use this and do some damage here uh now we've got mule we're gonna be using mule to keep this going and we want to keep up the uh the diablo as long as possible um and we also want to be keeping up the the mouth l but the with a brightwing on our team the hardest person to heal is going to be the diablo because he's always going to be really far forward uh we're going to drop down a couple traps here and then we are going to look back at again getting a quick kill and helping out our team we're soaking all of this wave uh and again we're going to use our w to continue soaking so do you see the the impact i'm always using with my w w is a huge piece at clearing these lanes quickly so that you're not really risking anything by staying out for very long uh, and you can actually double to triple soak if you're doing it really well um, we're just gonna hide over here maybe get a kill still nope no kill unfortunate um, but yeah so that's the downside you still can die um, but you can actually still get soaked rather safely I mean I was still expecting them to be up here for just a little bit longer but that's all right uh, I should be able to drop down a couple W's um, but most likely I'm going to just be heading in. Let's see what needs a... Uh, nothing really needs a mule. We'll just throw a mule right here. So we're going to head mid first. We want to actually drop down a couple W's in this area to try to delay them a little bit. And then we're going to jump up top. And this will allow us to be a little bit more uh, aggressive with this. And we're just going to keep this guy up. So now he can just play a little bit more aggressive. And we can keep him alive long enough to where he kills everyone. And once again, we'll just give him a shield. We're not too worried about this, honestly. Um, and again, we're soaking top right now with our body. So we're going to make sure to just take a step forward down here. We're also going to take a step over here and push out this lane. And if you want, you can also do this. Uh, you can also do this. And we're going to take a step back because their Genji likes to play pretty aggressive. We're going to get tens for our team. And after we get tens for our team, we are going to head down and... Uh, Hop down to the bottom lane once again. We always take clone, okay? Clone is super good and it creates the... It answers like the one downside for Abathur, which is... The one downside for Abathur is that you're always fighting in a uh, 4v5 situation. And it makes it to where you're no longer fighting in a 4v5. So we always want to be taking clone. The best clone targets are targets that uh, are very valuable without ults. Um, are also people that are very valuable without talents. Uh, I'm actually going to be cloning the mouth ale right here because we actually work off of each other when we have our dots. So uh, whatever he dots, we can drain. I can drain off of, and whatever I drain or whatever I dot, he can drain off of. So that's kind of the benefit of this is we both get to drain a lot of damage um, and healing, and I also just ate the ult for that. So that's going to be really good for us. And then they're using a lot of CC to try to deal with me, so I'm just going to simply keep this guy topped off. And I'm going to move a little bit forward so that I can uh, be a little bit more aggressive on this. I'm also going to drop down a couple W's here so I can clean up that. Uh, and we're just going to stick over here with uh, this Diablo. We won this first objective, and I'm pushing bottom very well. And we're pretty good, honestly. I mean, where we're at right now, I will end up getting taken out if I don't move. Um, but that's okay. We've already muled that. We've muled, we'll muled this one more time. And just make sure that our team is staying up. That uh, Jaina might die, and I don't know why she stayed there, because she killed all of my traps. But that's okay. I'm not too worried about it. Um, we're just going to top off the Diablo here. I, I don't really think we need to worry about anything else. Um, I will actually jump up here, because I want to be summoning things that can deal with that. Uh, and we're going to deal with these guys first, and we'll also just do a little bit of survivability here so we can kill that. Um, now our job is to pretty much just keep everything up. So uh, you saw the benefit of doing the... Uh, the clone on the mouth ale well that works similarly on Jaina as well Jaina is a great clone target and sometimes i like to clone right about now just because as you start getting later your abilities are much better to like not clone people i'm gonna tell this guy to back up because everyone's going up to him so we want to make sure he gets out alive uh, and at the same time, we want to jump down here to prevent the KT from getting a lot of value. So we're just going to step down here so that he doesn't do any AoEs to us um, and kill us. We are going to... He's actually rotating, so we're going to go plop, 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 plop. And we're going to just do a little shield here. And then we need to break that shield. And we're going to switch to the Soma Transference. This is going to be great um, for the... Uh, 
this, I mean, really anyone on, on our team because we can give a lot of healing to the people that we give this to. And so it's going to be really, really powerful. So we were able to keep Jaina alive in that situation. And now is a great time if I actually want to clone the Jaina, I can clone the Jaina and get some value off. Uh, so we're just going to do this. Our mule will continue keeping it topped off. Um, actually, he did kill it through the mule, so props to him. But uh, we're just going to get a little bit of soak here. We've gotten a lot of value, and so we just sit. And I'm going to go top this time. So the same thing on Malthael, or sorry, is, uh, on Abathar, you're going to just do the same thing that that I've been doing um, on the other one. You swap to the opposite lane of the objective every time, but now you're going to use W so that you can clean up the waves a little bit faster. And then we'll be jumping up to top lane. Now I'm worried that they're going to try to attack me here, so I'm going to play this rather safe, hitting a couple of the bushes in this area, and I'm just going to stay back. Uh, we'll have Mule available again. We'll probably just Mule this to get this topped off up here, uh, and we have this objective whenever we want it. This time our Diablo is rather tanky. I'm probably just going to pop an ult on Jaina um, if they try to fight it, and it does not look like they're going to try to fight it. So I don't even need to ult there, which is great. You don't want to use your ult if you don't have to because it's just one of those things that uh, that's going to get rather inefficient because you do want to use it for battles uh, or like objectives if you can. Um, another thing that you can do is you can set up traps over here at the cams. Um, they don't trigger unless you're actually fighting the camp so the benefit of doing that is you can set up a bunch of traps and then uh you can pick up the camp whenever you want to so i'm just gonna help speed this up a little bit so that we my team can go over there um and we should be good so as far as the state i would say abathur is not as bad as people are making abathur out to be right now um abathur not in a terrible position um, is he in the best position? No, he's not where he what he has been in the past, but he's also not terrible right now. We're just going to clone this guy and see if we can't help out a little bit. No interrupts. Uh, not yet, anyways. So, again, we're just going to try to apply this to as many people as possible to increase the amount of healing that that mouth is doing. Um, and it's just going to be a really valuable way of doing a huge portion of damage. Uh, we're going to take a step back and see if anything needs to have the... Uh... Oh, we're just going to kill this guy. Um, so everything should be good here. And once again, if we want to, we can head up here. And we can set more traps. And you can actually clear this all up by yourself. So if you ever want to just quickly grab a camp for your team... You can see, you can quickly drop this down. I mean, it's not super fast, but uh, it's not Mo's bad. I do actually need to pause dead. this. Looking for the There's Arcanus. a raid. Uh, get him. Don't raid while I'm watching the stream, because then it unpauses. Uh, next time that the minion spawns, I can drop it in the middle. And when I drop it in the middle, I can use the hat. So once the minion spawns, boom, I can then use this uh, minion and I can clear up a camp by myself. So if you're ever in a situation where you like feel your team needs to get a camp and they're just not doing it, uh, you can always go with that route. It's it's not bad. We'll get another mule in here, just preventing the, the damage that, that they're trying to do. We're going to drop two in there so we can push this lane out a little bit. And again, you can see I'm always utilizing that W, which is why I take that talent at level four. A lot of people are like, oh, but you have to go this other talent. Um, and you really don't. Uh, you can pretty much just go the W talent to increase your wave clear, and you're in a really, really good spot for these types of uh, areas where you need to, like, hat it really quickly to grab the experience, and then you just drop the hat after you've already grabbed the experience. In this case, we've got a nice fight starting up, so I'm going to start by cloning the Jaina in the back line, and we're going to just see if we can't help speed this up. We do get value off of the other things. We we might even see if we can get this uh, cleared up so that my team can channel. Um, that way, my team can go for the channel, and I can just go suicide as Jaina. And that's exactly what I'm going to do right here. I'm just going to go in and suicide, use a lot of their uh, abilities trying to kill me. And now that they've used a lot of their abilities, that's our second objective. So they wasted a lot of abilities on a clone, and I still am gaining value from this. We're giving movement speed to Diablo, and we are doing a ton of damage to the opposing team. Giving him movement speed, giving him healing, giving just about everything that we want. We do have a camp here. Uh, didn't do enough damage for me to mule again, and so we'll just mule down here and kind of go from there. 
Uh, we don't need to do anything here, really. Uh, we, we can't really do too much. Um, as far as we can just top off people a little bit, but our healing isn't great if there's not enemies nearby. So uh, we see that they're probably going to give up as far as the, the push right here. So I'm just going to simply do this. Drop down a bunch of these mines. He'll probably go and deal with the mines, but if he doesn't, then it's going to be decent. So I'm going to take a step back, just continue summoning things in this bush. I doubt they're going to go for me here, especially while they're losing their entire base. And we're just going to give a nice little shield to this Diablo and allow him to chase down people. So he gains some movement speed with the shield. He's going to gain his life back. He'll be essentially unkillable as long as I'm on here. We're grabbing hive mines so we can give shields to two different targets and do big heals to two different targets. Uh, and once again, this is going to be really valuable for us. Um, that'll also get a kill there. That'll get a kill there. And we're going to just move over here. And then we're going to uh, we're gonna clone Jaina. And once we clone Jaina, we're going to use the chill that we are putting on the, the fort to help her uh, also have chill. And we'll be able to wipe through this uh, core rather quickly. So Abathur is still good, guys. I mean, I wouldn't worry too much about Abathur. The, the minion changes are good and bad for him. Mostly bad, but they're not that bad. If you see experience contributed, Malthael still did more than I did. Um, but I still kept up. I kept my team in the game. We got those experience leads. Uh, if I didn't die that one time, I think it would be a little bit more valuable. But um, during objectives, you saw, I mean, they... They tried to kill me first a lot of those times. I ate a lot of very important abilities. So even in chaotic fights, that was still really good. So let me talk a little bit about the build that I go and why I recommend this build over going a different build. Um, I have like one major exception to this build, which is... Uh, where is it? Uh, let's see. Abathur. So... Level 1, we go Pressurized Glands. We're doing this because we're going to be taking uh, Soma Transference on 13. This means that you're going to val or, or benefit the most by um, hitting Frontline or, or Hatting Frontline. And if you're going to be benefiting the most from Hatting Frontline, Auto Attack Speed is not going to be that valuable. This is a great talent. This used to be a popular talent where you would throw it on like Sergeant Hammer in the back line. You'd give a bunch of attack speed, give her a shield, and then you'd jump off and go like soak for a bit. But um, I would say there's a few exceptions. If you've got a Twin Blades, you've got an Illidan, this is a pretty good talent. Outside of that, I don't really recommend this talent that much because you should be using your Q on the front line and the most valuable target to put your Q on is the tank because they're likely to stay alive long enough to see the most value out of pressurized glands and out of uh, soma transference. So I would rather you take needle spine, which is gonna increase the damage in your range of your Q, than um, adrenal overload most of the time. I like this talent because you can quickly drop down three to five Ws in a lane, throw your hat in that lane for just a second, it wipes the lane, and then you can drop off of that and go to something else and go to another lane. Uh, you do have the ability to triple soak with Abathur, but it's really tricky to do. Um, you pretty much need your team to be constantly distracting the enemy team. You sit in one lane, and then you'll alternate your hat and your Ws in the other lanes. So you'll use Ws uh, to clear up the middle. Let's say you're at uh, you're soaking middle. You'll use your Ws to blow up top lane while your hat's there, and then you'll sit with your hat and push bottom lane, allowing you to triple soak in the game. And again, he's one of two heroes that can really triple soak reliably, and uh, it is a possibility. So those are some things that have been kind of added. But uh, overall, he's a little bit riskier because you can't really body soak as often. You saw I got dropped rather quickly, so I wouldn't recommend him too much as far as that. But to answer the question of where does he stand in the meta, I think he's okay. I don't think he's that great. I think he still enables a lot of frontline heroes to stay in the fight a little bit longer. I still think clone's very valuable. And he does still have a global. If you see five people fighting over an objective, you can body soak. I still did that. I still body soaked uh, while there were five people at the objective, which means you still get the same old value of Avatar. You just have to wait a little bit longer to get that. I don't expect to see him too much in the competitive scene uh, outside of maybe like Cursed Hollow um, and maps like Cursed Hollow like this one. Um, but overall, yeah, Abathur is still very strong. I've been playing him a lot. Um, it's just that it does require someone who likes this play style and is willing to like really practice it. And you need to make sure to draft him into the right teams. You have to make sure that you can get value out of both your hat and the clone. If you can't get value out of both the hat and the clone, it's almost not worth running it. 
Um, so make sure good clone targets are things that um, can stay up a little bit, can usually take a few hits, and can benefit from it. Malthael and Jaina are some of the best clone targets. Greymane's also very good. You don't need a lot of talents. Uh, he can get a lot of value off. And then there's certain tanks. I like to clone Arthas a lot because I can just slow their entire team and all the damage they throw at me is just wasted. So I do like that. Um, anything like that, high CC or just a, a lot of extra damage that you can bring is great for clones. Hat targets is any frontliner that can stay in for a while. I like divers that have a lot of mobility because then uh, they step away, you heal them up, then they go back in, you do some extra damage with pressurized glands. So I do like mobile heroes. But yeah, that is Abathur, and uh, I do think that he's still pretty good. I don't think he's like S tier by any means, but he is pretty good. So thank you guys for watching, and feel free to check out my other videos.